Hi guys, if you are watching this presentation, you need a little extra help with photosynthesis and cellular respiration, also known as cell energy. So no big deal, it's actually a pretty simple chapter, so we'll try to get that knocked out pretty quick here. So photosynthesis is done by autotrophs. These are typically plants or algae. This means that they can make their own food. They're on autopilot. They can make their own food using energy from the sun. This happens in specialized structures inside a plant called chloroplasts. What they do is they absorb light into their, pigment, into their pigments, one very specific pigment, which is chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is inside chloroplasts, which makes plants green, and it helps them do photosynthesis. This is the reaction for photosynthesis. Plants need carbon dioxide and water and they produce glucose and oxygen. Remember that the whole purpose of photosynthesis is to make food or glucose. Glucose is C6H12O6. So it takes six carbon dioxide and six water molecules to make one molecule of glucose and then it has a byproduct, six oxygen. Remember plants don't use oxygen. We breathe it, but they don't make it for us. They just kind of throw it away and we use it. They're doing the whole thing so that they can make one molecule of food. There are two types of reactions that do this. We have the light independent and the light dependent reactions. You don't really need to know this information. I just wanted to put it in there just in case it ever popped up. The light independent reaction happens in I'm sorry, the light dependent reaction happens in the chloroplasts and the light independent reaction is known as the Calvin cycle. This happens just inside the cell. One more quick look at it. Remember that there are two major reactions that make photosynthesis happen. We have light hitting the chloroplasts. This is where the light dependent reaction happens. This is where water gets made into oxygen. And then it goes into its second uh, reaction, which is the light independent reaction. This is just in the cytoplasm. And this is where we get our sugar made. This is the light independent reaction. Now let's look at cellular respiration. Cellular respiration takes that food, the food made from plants, and converts it to energy, which is in the form of ATP. This happens in both plants and animals. Remember, photosynthesis only happens in autotrophs. Once they make the food, they have to do something with it. Food in itself is not enough. It has to then convert that food into energy. And that's what all cells need. So that is what basically happens in all living organisms, we make ATP. Now here's the reaction for cellular respiration. It's one molecule of glucose, six molecules of oxygen, six molecules of carbon dioxide, six molecules of water, and energy. If you look at the chemical equation for photosynthesis, we have carbon dioxide and water on the left, plants need carbon dioxide and water. For cellular respiration, carbon dioxide and water are on the right. That's what gets made from cellular respiration. It's a cycle. So what gets made in cellular respiration gets used in photosynthesis. What gets used or what gets made in photosynthesis, glucose and oxygen, that's what gets used in cellular respiration to make ATP. They are perfect, perfectly opposite of each other. Now there's different types of cellular respiration. If you use oxygen in this cellular respiration, this makes 36 ATP. It's quite a lot. 36 ATP from one molecule of glucose. You think that's a lot, but in reality, this is one of the reasons why we have to eat all the time, because we burn through a lot of ATP just from living. Now let's look at what ATP is. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, A-T-P. 
There are three parts. We have adenine, which is a nitrogen base. We have a ribose, sugar, and we have three phosphates. This might look kind of close to a nucleotide. Actually, it is very closely related to the nucleotides found in DNA and RNA. It's just a different type of nucleotide. When you have cellular respiration without oxygen, this is known as anaerobic cellular respiration. Some organisms can live without oxygen. The organisms that can live without oxygen, these are ones that don't have mitochondria. No oxygen used means anaerobic, no oxygen. But this only makes two ATP for every glucose. What this means is that the organisms have to stay really, really small, like single cell organisms, like yeast. And the end product can be alcohol and carbon dioxide. This can happen, this happens pretty commonly in yeast and fungus. We, as eukaryotic organisms, we can also do anaerobic cellular respiration. If we're doing a lot of exercise or if we're straining our body a lot and we burn through the oxygen in our bodies like marathon runners, if there's no oxygen left in our bodies, we actually have to switch over to anaerobic cellular respiration where we used to make 36 ATP, we now only make 2 ATP. And the process is called lactic acid fermentation, and this happens in our muscle cells, and this makes our muscles burn. Lactic acid is a burning of your muscles because the acid is being produced. So we have carbon dioxide, lactic acid, and two ATP made in our muscles. So that's cellular respiration. Please remember, the only purpose of cellular respiration is to make ATP from food. That's why we have it. Now, there are, if we're looking back at aerobic cellular respiration, this requires oxygen. There are two steps of reactions that happen. Um, it happens in the mitochondria. So the first step is glycolysis. Glycolysis happens out in the cytoplasm. This is anaerobic cellular respiration in glycolysis. And then in the mitochondria, we have two reactions happening called the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. You don't really have to be super familiar with these processes. You just kind of have to be familiar with their names. And here's a basic breakdown of how what happens in each of these reactions. So remember, there's two types of cellular respiration. There's aerobic with oxygen and anaerobic without oxygen. This is also known as fermentation. So anaerobic, no oxygen, and you only make two ATP. Aerobic has oxygen, and this is where we have our big, big, big output of ATP. It's our money maker, okay? There are a whole bunch of steps required for aerobic cellular respiration. We have glycolysis and Krebs cycle, and then we have the electron transport chain. This is the one you need to know. The ETC, the electron transport chain, this is where we make the most energy. And glycolysis really only makes a total of two ATP in this anaerobic, so it's very little. Please remember, we as, or as eukaryotic organisms could not survive long-term on anaerobic cellular respiration. We have to breathe. If you don't need oxygen, that means you don't have mitochondria and you have to stay really small because you only make two ATP at a shot. We're bigger, we're more complex, so we require oxygen to make 36 ATP. Here's the energy tally that we get Remember, we have 36 ATP from aerobic cellular respiration. So glycolysis makes two, Krebs makes two, electron transport chain makes 32. You don't really have to know that so much. It's just most important that you have, you know that 36 ATP, the most energy gets made from aerobic cellular respiration. And anaerobic only makes two, and so they can't be too energetic or too large because they don't get enough energy. Photosynthesis and cellular respiration are a cycle. 
they are opposite cycles. Photosynthesis gets energy from the sun, makes glucose, which is organic molecules, and oxygen. That glucose and oxygen go into a mitochondria, which makes energy. This powers everything in an organism, and we lose that energy as heat. Mitochondria make carbon dioxide and water as their end product after ATP, which photosynthesis uses. It's one big cycle. Great job, everybody. Study hard.